Righto, Toyota champs, and today I have the beast in, the 10-core MacBook Pro i9 with 64 gigs of RAM, by the way, upgraded with Crucial RAM, 3,200 MHz. It will only run at 2,066, but it does work. So it's up to you if you want 3,200, it will work at that sort of speed in Windows. And of course, it has the 5,700 XT. Now the RAM I use, I'll leave links in the description to the RAM I used. It's high quality, Crucial RAM, it's great. That's the way you want to fly. And I will be comparing this to the MacBook Pro 16 and my gaming beast. Yes, my gaming rig, which has an i9-9900K, 64 gigabytes of 3200 DDR RAM. But this is not any RAM. This is, well, it's RGB for a start. Well, well at least two sticks are. But it is crucial RAM. I do like crucial RAM. And it's gaming RAM as well. So it's got really tight timing. So... We'll find out if that helps at all, but it has 64 gigs and it has an RTX 2070 Super. So it's going to be interesting comparing that to an iMac, sort of around the same sort of price and specs. Although it is 9900K, it's missing two cores, but of course I can use a lot more power with a PC compared to an iMac. And of course the MacBook Pro 16 with the 5600M 32 gigs RAM and the i9. So first things first, let's look at this. This is on the iMac, the i9 10 core. Now this is running Cinebench, so I'm slamming that CPU and it doesn't stay quiet like the base model. The base model will stay pretty much quiet throughout this whole test. This one doesn't because the base model will use 75 watts. This model here will use up to 150 watts, even more than that. But it will sustain about 140 watts, so the fans will come on. And you will hear them. The fans aren't that loud, even at max sort of fans. In real world usage, you're talking 46 decibels, so you know, around 6 decibels quieter than a MacBook Pro 16. And the fans only mostly come on when you're slamming that CPU. Because have a look at this test now. And what you'll see is, I said it was 150, 140 watts, didn't I? But no, this isn't sustaining 140 watts, and that's because I'm capturing this footage. So if you display output from an iMac, you'll lose about 15, 20 watts. And you can see it right here. So I can't capture the footage because I'm going to lose about 20 watts. And this happens on the MacBook Pro 16 too. If you output to an external monitor, your performance goes down CPU-wise. And that's even the same in Windows. Now, as I said, you will hear the fans when you're slamming that CPU. But I could get a really good Cinebench score out of this when I'm not recording externally to a display or a capture card, which it thinks is a display anyway. 5,600 Cinebench, okay, so that's really nice score there, especially when you consider you're only using up to 150 watts. I mean, my Beast PC, it only does like 4.7. If you overclock the 5 gigahertz, it'll do about 5,000. But that's using 200 and something watts. And yes, it has two less cores. And this thing's only using 150, 140 watts. And the 10th gen CPU of the 10900K can do about, you know, 6,200 or something like that Cinebench. But it's using like 200 watts. So this is really good. It's supposed to be 95 watts, even though it's PR1 is actually 125 watts. I would say it's a bin part because it has good performance per watt. Now, when you slam the CPU and GPU together, it actually gets quieter. So you're thinking, why is it going to get quieter? Well, that's because the CPU gets limited to around 65 watts when you slam that GPU 100% and slam the CPU 100%. Now, the CPU can use more than 65 watts if the CPU is not being hit 100%, like in a gaming load, for example. You know, the total system can draw, you know, up to 180 watts. But generally, CPU, GPU together, you're going to be 140, 150 watts. The same as the base model, actually. The only difference is the way it's split. It's like 75 watts CPU, 75 watts GPU on the base model. Whereas this one here will give more like 90 watts to the GPU and around, you know, 60, 65 watts to the CPU. That's simultaneously. So it might have a little bit more, 5 watts, maybe 10, but... Really, it's around the same sort of maximum thermal output. But yeah, in the gaming load, I was getting up to 180 watts total package. Now, I will say the base model is quieter in gaming. It's quieter video editing. Like when I ran the Pugin System benchmark, it was quiet, pretty much silent through that test. This one, as soon as that CPU gets hit 100% load, it stays quiet for a long time. But yeah, you, you will hear the fans when that CPU gets hit. I mean, it can do up to 150 watts, as I said, so that's a lot of power. And you will hear the fan, although it's only 46 decibels. So compared to a laptop, it is quieter. I also noticed that night in a really quiet room, you can hear the fan idle. So if I just have a look at the Luxmark score here, you can see it's 23,390. 
that's only about 1,400 more than the MacBook Pro 16, which is quite interesting. It's literally the same GPU in the MacBook Pro 16 5,600M versus the 5,700XT. But the 5,700XT can do in excess of 100 watts, but it also has 16 gigabytes GDDR6, and the 5,600M is 50 watts with 8 gigabytes HBM. So it's very close. 1,400 more for, you know, 50, 60 watts more power. It's not that much. So that 5,600M in that MacBook Pro, yeah, it is beast. Someone wanted me to put up the Unigen Heaven benchmark in the extreme setting. Well, here it is. I don't know what that means. OpenGL is deprecated anyway. So I've done it for you, bro. Now let's look at some quick benchmarks. I've got Final Cut Pro here. And this is a sample project. This is 6K ProRes RAW and it's 12-bit outputted to 10-bit 442 ProRes. So it's actually a mixture of 6K, 4K and actually 1080p, 60. So it's a mixture of everything. And this is the difference. And the, why I like this test is because it uses CPU and GPU together. And you can see there the extra two cores, the more power it can sustain on the CPU course it's faster than the macbook pro 16 but that macbook pro 16 is fast look at it look how fast it is faster than the base model imac and of course yeah all right that only has six cores and has a weaker graphics but uses a lot more power than the macbook pro so i thought that was interesting all right so here's puget system benchmark and what you can see here is by the specs which model is which obviously this one here in the top left is the macbook pro 16 the bottom left is um, the 5300 the base model imac the top right is the i9 10 core imac and the bottom one is my beast gaming pc now i will say this is with Adobe 14.2. Now, in the latest version, I think it's 14.3 or something like that, they have had a big upgrade for Mac, and they're much faster. I'll show you a Mac score in a sec. But I wanted to test them all on the same, and yes, this does have the GPU encoding with the PCs, and you can see here, it all sort of scales. The PC is clearly faster. That's thanks to mostly that GPU rendering, because if you look at the playback scores, it's not that much difference between the i9, iMac, and the PC here, but that export score is where it's getting that big boost with the GPU exporting with the NVENC encoder. So I will show you this score though. So this is actually with latest Adobe update. So there you go, 14.31. And by the way, 14.31 doesn't boost the PCs that much. The update improves the Macs more than it does the PCs. But there you can see the difference in the score now. And with this latest update of Premiere, you can see that the live playback score, the standard playback score, is actually faster than the PC now. Although, of course, that export score doesn't have NVENC encoders on the Mac. So yeah, you're not getting that benefit. So yeah, it's awesome. Have a look at that MacBook Pro 16, 59.7. That is awesome playback. It's not that much less than, say, an iMac, is it? Now, if you do want to see me build a temp generation PC or actually a Ryzen system, I have two motherboards in here. This Tomahawk one from MSI is actually a beast. And I overclocked the 5600 in that, like, really fast. No issues whatsoever. And I've got this Vision D, which is a Ryzen one. And that thing looks cool. So if you want to see that, let me know. And I will compare to the latest Adobe products here. All right, if we have a look for gaming. Now, I don't have Fire Strike score for the 5300 base model iMac just because... It was crashing. I don't know why, actually. I had a few glitches, graphical glitches with this top spec i9 iMac. I don't know what that is. Hopefully it's a driver issue. But anyway, here you can see Wolf. It is on the top here. And you might be thinking, well, so it should be. It's a desktop. Well, in actual fact, the Arrow with the 2070 Super uses pretty much the same power as this iMac. Very similar power draw if you look at CPU and GPU together. So it's beaten it fair and square, although Fire Strike it does like AMD graphics, but if we just have a look at a gaming benchmark, if we go to Witcher here, you can see the 5700 XT is not far behind the 2070 Super. And remember, as I said, same sort of power draw between the iMac and this sort of gaming laptop. So it's a beast. It's going to be a beast for gaming. It is significantly faster than the base model, as you'd expect. It can draw over 120 watts on that GPU, okay? And it will sustain sometimes in gaming loads up to 180 watts. It is louder, of course. That GPU is using 90 watts compared to 70 watts. And the CPU is using less watts on the base model as well. So it's a quieter experience. 
But I've got to say, under gaming load, it's not really that loud. Under normal sort of usage, like video editing, it's not loud. It's only when you slam that CPU 100% you get the real loud noise. And it's not that loud. You're talking 46 decibels, as I said before. So I've got to say, all in all, I'm mighty impressed with this. It's a good package. It's well balanced, you know, for the performance it gets. It would be nice if it was quieter like the iMac Pro, but this thing is a beast. And by the way, if I go back to that Fire Strike score, it's like 27,000 I get on my gaming rig. So yeah, that's what happens when you've got more power, more juice. RTX 2070 Super, you know, that thing's using, I don't know, it's probably using 450, 500 watts compared to 150, maybe 170, 80 max in a gaming load. So it is well balanced. It's a nice, it's got an awesome display. I like this iMac. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Catch you in the next one. Tally ho.